Oh no. My Google AdSense application got rejected again. This is a frustrating problem faced by several bloggers and webmasters that want to monetize their websites by applying for the Google AdSense partnership program as a publisher. Some even go as far as deleting their entire website, starting all over just to get approved. Sadly they still get stuck with the same problem of not being accepted into the AdSense program. Welcome to Tribe Web Information Tech, and in this video, I will list the common Google AdSense application errors and how to fix them for guaranteed approval. Duplicate contents. This is the most common Google AdSense error, and it is quite straightforward to fix. You get this error when you have contents on your websites that are similar to each other. Since early 2018, Google AdSense uses an automated algorithm when checking websites applying for its program. Google doesn't disclose the metrics used, so you might get confused when you get rejected with duplication error. So you can use several tools such as DupliCheckr or SiteLiner to check if you have duplicated contents on your website. I will show you how to do that. Firstly, you have to visit Copyscape or SiteLiner. Personally, I prefer SiteLiner, nevertheless, both services work great. For Copyscape, type in the URL of the website that you want to check for duplicated contents. And click the Go button. If you prefer SiteLiner, the process is the same. Depending on your internet speed and how bulky your web page is, this process would take some seconds to complete. Once it is done, you will see the list of duplicated contents on your website. You can also download them if you want to use them later. Scrapped contents. This error covers a broad range of fixes. However, it generally points to the quality of your contents. If you get this error, then you have to reanalyze your website and make sure the following criteria are met. Make sure your contents are unique. Plagiarized contents are contents that are taken from other sources and used on your website. Most people mistake plagiarism for just texts, but no. Plagiarized contents can also come from images and other media files you use on your website. So you have to manually check all pages on your website and find out those pages that are using media files that are not originally yours. Delete those images and use free stock images from websites like Pixabay. I have a tutorial on how to get 100% copyright free images directly from Google, you should watch that video if you want images directly from Google. Aside images, you can use free web tools like small SEO tools, Grammarly, and directly from Google to check if your article is unique or plagiarized. I will show you how to use Google to check for plagiarism. Firstly, head over to Google for this tutorial, I will be using an article that has already been written. So let us use this article about an Android phone review. Open the article, copy a section. Go back to Google. Before pasting the section you earlier copied, put quotes. Now paste the contents between the quotes. Check properly to make sure what you pasted is enclosed by opening and closing quotes. Now click on search. If the article is plagiarized or has similar sentences with another web page, it will show more than one result. Here I have just one result, and it is from the website I earlier copied from. If you find plagiarized contents, then you have to change them before applying for AdSense. Make sure your content adds value to your readers. This is a pretty important criterion. As a blogger, you give out lots of information to your readers, so it is advisable to only blog about topics you have experience with. There are lots of contents on the web, if you search for a single term, you will receive lots of results on search engine results pages. Most of these results talk about the same thing, so if you want to get approved on Google AdSense, make sure your content stands out from the rest. Add more value to your content. For example, if you want to write about losing belly fat, check what other websites have written about that same topic. If your competitor has given 5 tips to losing belly fat, give 10 tips. Thus, your website has added more value than what your competitor's website has. Make sure you have readable contents. Most bloggers do not want to spend time writing their articles. Some of them hire less experienced writers, others use article spinning tools, and some write the articles, but spend little time to make proper spellings and punctuations. Make sure your contents can be easily understood by your readers. If your readers find it difficult to understand your articles, then you would definitely get scrapped contents errors when applying for Google AdSense. There is a trick I use to make sure my contents are readable before publishing them. I will show you what I do. First, you need to look for good text-to-speech software, I use ttsreader.com. 
copy your article and paste it in the box provided. Then click on the play button, it will read back your entire content back to you, and you can easily spot grammatical errors. This is a great alternative to paid software like Grammarly. Thin contents. As the name implies, your contents are thin. Your articles do not have enough words to make them quite valuable. Although Google AdSense does not specify the minimum amount of words or articles needed before your application is approved, you should write between 10 to 15 topics, with a minimum of 600 words per article. Personally, I will advise you to write 15 good articles with at least 800 words in them, rather than having 500 articles that have no value, and its contents are vague. Google gives more attention to the quality of your contents and not the quantity, so your chances of being approved will increase if you focus on giving out good contents. No content. This is easily mistaken for thin content. No content is sometimes encountered when your website is blocking Google bots from crawling some particular page or the whole website. You need to allow Google AdSense bots to crawl your entire website using custom robot tags. I have a video that talks about the best robot TXT, check it out and get the recommended settings. Under construction. This error is typical when your website has several broken links. Use tools like Broken Links Checker to find dead links on your website, and then delete those links, or alternatively make a 404 redirect. I have a tutorial on 404 redirects and how to set it up. Policy error. This is the most confusing error for most bloggers, and it has been the most faced error since 2019. There are several factors that could lead to AdSense policy error, and I will list them below. Make sure you post contents that do not promote hate, violence, drugs, and adult contents. Make sure your contents do not advertise products and services that will be able to spy on other people without their consent. So if you write about products or services such as malware and spyware, that can be used to track people's location, conversations, and browsing history without their permission, then your website won't be allowed into the Google AdSense program. This is a new policy that was introduced in July 2020 in most part of America, and will become global in August 2020. Make sure you do not post stuff related to hacking and other criminal-related activities. Make sure your website has its privacy policy, cookies consent and policy pages. Make sure you don't post contents that deceive your readers with issues related to politics, religion, ethnicity, and other matters of public interest. If your website is about or promotes any form of online gambling, your AdSense application will likely not be approved. If you post about explosives, guns, alcohol, and hard drugs, your AdSense application will be rejected. Only post contents that are originally yours. Do not post images, software, cracked versions, copyright protected songs, and videos that you are not permitted to use by its original owners. Website theme and template. This is not well known by many, but Google AdSense also uses this as a factor. If you are using a null theme then you will likely face problems with your Google AdSense application. Some null themes are filled with malicious codes that can harm both your websites, and also steal the data of your visitors. So make sure you use theme gotten from the official stores, or build yours from scratch. Final tip. Using generic themes are great when applying for AdSense. Generic themes are those themes that are found free when you create a new website or blog. These themes come pre-installed in both WordPress and Blogger platforms. So, if you are not sure about the templates you are using, go for any of the generic them offered by either Blogspot or WordPress. Thanks for watching this video, please if you find it helpful then hit the like button. If you have not seen my previous videos on how to improve your AdSense CPC and monthly revenue, then you should check those videos after this. Also, I will be dropping more tips related to SEO, blogging, backlink building, Google AdSense and other types of web monetization, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, and you won't miss those videos. Until my next tutorial, have a great day.